Good afternoon, everyone. My talk today has three parts. The first part, I'll talk about the global engineering and R&D spend and give you some comparison between how global companies are performing via versus companies in France. The second part of my talk is really about the key challenges faced by companies in driving digital engineering and how some of the companies are transforming and talk about a few key best practices. And third, I really believe that France has a natural advantage to be a leader in driving digital transformation. I'll, I'll show you some data in terms of why we believe uh, France can take leadership going forward. The first thing I would start with is talk about what is digital engineering. How many of you know the definition of a digital enterprise? Okay. I thought a few, few would know, but anyway, I will start with that and define digital engineering and go into a little bit more details. Here is our vision of a digital enterprise. An enterprise which drives business outcomes around personalized experience, could be around new products and services, operational efficiency, using innovative business models, such as sharing economy-based business models, data monetization, or as a service. And they do this by using newer technologies, machine learning, AR, VR, blockchain, robotic process automation, and so on. And all of these companies have a modern digital infrastructure which contains sensors for, for IoT technologies. You have software-defined uh, infrastructure. Then you have data lakes for real-time analytics. And you have security infrastructure, very, very critical for any digital organization. And the API and infrastructure in management layer to enable organizations to seamlessly make the digital as well as legacy systems interact. So this is our definition of a digital enterprise. Now, what is digital engineering? Digital engineering is the technology which, is, which companies, uh, the money they spend for building technologies in the modern infrastructure or in digital technology foundations. That's one part of digital engineering, for example. Microsoft building their Azure ML infrastructure layer, or G building the Predix uh, platform. That is part of digital engineering. The second part of digital engineering is when companies use these technologies to build new products and services or enhance existing products and services. That is the second part of digital engineering. Here, uh, a large automotive company working on connected car or autonomous driving, or a company building a new revenue stream for predictive maintenance. Those are also part of digital engineering. So digital engineering has two parts. One, companies who build this technology. The second, companies who use this technology for various applications, specifically around building new uh, products and services or enhance existing products and services. So that's our definition of digital engineering. Now we get into some numbers. The globally, organizations spend, the corporate engineering and R&D spend was $1.1 trillion. And all of our numbers today are on US dollars because our, we have been tracking the numbers over the last five years on US dollars. So you might have to convert that into euros in your mind. And out of that, digital engineering was about 22%. Right? You can see that from 2012 to 2017, the growth of digital engineering is much faster, almost doubled, compared to the overall engineering R&D spend. And the last few years has seen a massive level of innovation in terms of new technologies. Machine learning has come out of university labs to real applications. Blockchain, which is really a technology for cryptocurrency, is being used across industry applications. You have innovative business models. 
companies are looking at Google and say, hey, how is Google providing the software for free, but monetizing the data they're collecting from their customers? And companies who've been around for the last 100 years have so much of data about the customers, they're looking at how do I innovate and create new revenue streams using data. You have hyper-scale startups which are coming in, which are disrupting existing companies. And last but not the least, you have a global digital ecosystem today which allows organizations to accelerate the digital engineering. A combination of this, our prediction for 2022 is digital engineering is going to be close to half a billion, um, 500 million, billion dollars, right? And it's going to double in the last next five years even though overall engineering R&D is going to grow from 1.1 trillion to 1.23 trillion. So that part, the digital engineering part, is one of the fastest growing within these areas. Now we want to really compare how our company, so when we look at this data, we want to see are there certain companies who are doing this better than others. To do this analysis, we went back and looked at the top 500 global R&D spenders. And the first chart, it shows the R&D spend of the top 500 R&D spenders. And digital native companies are companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, who, who are the foundation is based on digital engineering. And you can see this orange line that shows those digital native companies. This was for 2012, right? You have lots of companies which are traditional companies we've been around for the last 100 years, pharmaceutical companies, automotive companies, semiconductor companies, telecom companies, right? And, and a few of these in the orange lines. When you look at it in 2017, you can see this companies coming in. Out of the top 10 global R&D spenders, four of them are digital native companies. These companies, just mind-boggling data, these companies have grown revenue three times in the last five years, three times in the last five years. Their market capitalization has gone by four times. And their increase in R&D spend is about five times in the last five years. Amazon spent $3 billion in R&D in 2012. This year, they spent $17 billion, $17 billion in R&D. And they're now number one in the world. They recently overtook Volkswagen to become the number one spender. Warren Buffett, in the last call, last investor call, he talked about Jeff Bezos. He said he has never met, had never seen somebody, an entrepreneur, succeed in building two businesses simultaneously, which are divergent in terms of customer and operation, and be successful like Jeff Bezos. He talks about their Amazon cloud business and e-commerce business. There is never anyone in the history who has been successful in building two such large-scale businesses simultaneously. Look at what Amazon does. They are constantly looking for inefficiencies in the industry incumbents. They are looking for unmet customer needs. And they're using the strength of data. They're using the secret strength, the, the quality of talent they have. They're using the compute infrastructure. And high speed velocity and high velocity and speed of business decisions. And using this to disrupt existing companies. And this is just getting started. And you're going to see a lot more of these companies coming in. And, and, and we want to see, hey, here is the top 500 globally. How are French companies performing compared to the global companies? And France has a tradition of being an engineering leader over the 100 years. And when we looked at the top 500 companies from an R&D spender perspective in 2012, there were 30 companies from France. I mean, when we looked at it this year, the number has come down to tw uh, 24. And when we looked at US, about 188 companies, and it's going up to 191. Even though they've added only few companies, here you can see that US has added 11 digital companies 
in the top 500 in the last five years. Some of the traditional companies have gone out, but you have newer digital companies coming into the list. And France, not a single digital company got created which got added to the top 500. In fact, the last company, which the company which got founded in France, which is in the top G500, is in the 1980s. There is no firm which has been founded after 1980s is part of the top 500 R&D spenders. This is for a country with a very strong engineering tradition, for somebody who is looking from outside in. Then the other data point we want to look at, who are this next generation of companies which are coming in? And can we look at them and see what is going to be the next 100 companies going to join the top 500 companies? How many of you have heard of the term unicorn? So this is not the mythical unicorn. This is the real <laughs> unicorn, the startup unicorn, which are <laughs> which are companies with over a billion dollars in market cap. There are over 220 companies globally with over a billion dollars in market cap. 114 in the US, 58 in China, 10 in India, 2 in France, Blablacar and OVH, 2 in France, of the top 222 companies which are valued a billion dollars. There's a lot of catching up to do for both large companies as well as newer companies getting created to drive digital transformation over the next few years. And digital transformation is complex and it's a lot of hard work. We looked at this top 500 companies to understand are there key trends, challenges we can identify. The first challenge, the first challenge we are able to see is companies fighting their internal battles. There are always skeptics in the company, in the leadership team, who don't want to change, who are happy with the status quo. They're happy with the way they have been running the business for decades. They don't want to change. And making the change becomes extremely hard. So that's one big constraint. Second, a company like Google or Amazon are able to build this because they don't have legacy. When you have been around for 100 years, you have a lot of legacy. Dealing with legacy complexities is another big challenge companies face. Then the third issue is, do I build it? Do I buy it from somebody else? It's always this major challenge. And one of the hardest challenges is for them to attract the talent which is required for driving digital transformation. This talent is very, very different. The millennial talent is very different. And they are looking for flat hierarchy, they're looking for high quality of work. And they are not used to working in an organization with large hierarchy. So how do you attract the talent and bring them in to drive digital transformation? Very, very hard. And finally, what is definition of digital is changing? That's more and more new technology. Three years ago, AI and machine learning was not a big deal. Today, that is the primary foundation of a company like Google are getting built. So digital definition is changing. How do you keep up with what is changing rapidly? So these are some of the challenges faced by companies. And companies use three models for driving digital transformation. One is incubate. This is the easiest. You ask a CEO, hey, what are you doing about digital transformation? Ha, oh, I hired a digital officer. What, what does he do? Oh, he has POCs. He works on proof of concepts with about 10 engineers for a company which is $20 billion. Uh, and the company has a tons and tons of POCs, but no meaningful impact. Uh, very easy to do. You can create a nice office, hire people differently. You can pay them a little bit more. Doesn't really create business impact. Second, OK, I'm not able to do it. Let me go buy something. So again, when you buy, 
When you acquire company, if you're buying a smaller company, it's very similar to incubation, not creating meaningful impact. And, that, and when they buy a larger company, which is driving transformation, companies like Intel bought Mobileye to get into autonomous car, which fundamentally changes the, the DNA of the organization. So when you do acquisitions, the larger acquisition changes the organization. And the third, what we call as permeate, is the hardest model to execute. But that creates the highest where the digital transformation is not kept in silos with a chief digital, digital officer, but the business unit leadership is measured on digital. They are given targets around new revenue, targets around operational efficiency, on dr using digital technologies. That is the hardest one to do, and you have companies like Honeywell done it extremely well, where every single business unit is given a target around digital in building new revenue streams based on digital. And Honeywell uses their center of excellence across the globe, which has deep digital capabilities to help individual business units to drive this transformation. So you have these three models. And the top is the hardest. So I'll talk a little bit more in terms of what companies are doing to drive digital transformation across the company. First thing you need. You need a vision, right? You need to understand what are the key disruption, be it technology, business model, be it around market, be it around ecosystem, which is disrupting your business. And you can't analyze this by just studying your ex existing competition. You need to ana analyze it by studying digital native companies, by studying the startups which are disrupting your organization and then deciding what are the key use cases which is going to create meaningful business impact. Understanding that is the most important thing. Once you drive that, once you create the right priorities, you got to set up an organization which has the right organization structure, right set of people, right centers of excellence in locations wherever you are able to find the right talent. You need to not, you cannot do this yourself. You have to work with the ecosystem. And I'll talk a little bit about what that ecosystem means. And finally, you need to reimagine the processes. And we'll touch upon each of this area. First, let's look at some of the use cases. Here's a recent study we did on IoT and how IoT is adopted in enterprises. For people who don't know, this is a spider chart. I'm a consultant, so I have to use at least one spider chart in my presentation. So bear with me. So the way to read that is these are the use cases, customer experience, new products and services, product optimization, and the colors are the different industries, automotive, industrial, healthcare, and retail. You can clearly see that the lot of impact companies are focusing on is use cases which creates optimization, operational efficiency. That's the first set of use cases. The second set of use cases are the ones which drives customer experience. And the third set of use cases is about creating new revenue streams. And, and the new revenue streams, like I said, a lot of companies are still in the pr pr proof of concept, uh, concept model, and it might take some more time for it to mature and scale. But largely, these are the use cases companies are prioritizing. Second is about leadership. And very interesting study we did. We, we looked at the top 500 companies, looked at the li digital leaders in this organization, and say, where are they coming from? And this number shows the number of hires these companies, the top 500 global R&D spenders, do from outside their, outside their organization. Just in 2017, the last 11 months, 100 of the top 500 companies have hired digital leaders from outside the organization. Out of that 100 companies, 50% of them have hired leaders from digital native companies. So if you're leaders who have to drive transformation, if you're not willing to change, your organizations are going to go outside 
and hire talent who have the relevant capability to drive this transformation. The second part, where is the talent which has to drive this change? For this, we took the top 100 digital native so companies and then looked at the talent pool which are working on driving digital engineering in these organizations. There's no surprises, the locations which came out, Silicon Valley, Seattle, China, India. Right? These are top locations where companies are driving digital engineering. Now, one of the big things companies do now is, hey, let me set up this small center in Silicon Valley to go and hire top talent so that I will drive digital transformation. That's a common thing we hear when we go and talk to companies in Europe. You got to understand what we call as a talent chain. It's a talent chain is like a food chain. In Silicon Valley, the top of the food chain is Google and Facebook, the, the top companies. The second part of the talent chain, you have companies like Uber, Airbnb, Snapchat, which are unicorns, large startups. The third part of the talent chain is our company like Cisco, Intel, which are local companies in the Bay Area being created 10, 20 years ago. And the fourth part of talent ch the chain are companies from all over the world, including other parts of US, setting up centers there. So if you are a company setting up a center in Silicon Valley, if you are not in the top of the ta value chain, you're not attracting the top talent in that location. You're paying a lot of money for talent which is not had the right capability. Right? So understanding the talent chain in any location you go to, be it China, be it India, be it any location, understanding the talent chain and figuring out where you are in that and will you be able to attract the right talent and making those decisions to create centers of excellence is very, very critical. Here is what we call global engineering architecture. This is for Amazon. Here is how the global engineering centers are structured. There are two centers, one, two in the US, which are hubs. Then a whole bunch of satellites. The hubs focus on product charters. They own the products. You have satellites, which fo focus on parts of the products. And you have outposts, which are focused on specific niche skills, which could have come through an acquisition. Creating an engineering architecture for your company with the right hubs and right satellites, with the right skill in each of the location, is very essential for you to drive digital engineer. And the next is about ecosystem. And many companies, many of our customers have the central R&D hub, right? All partnerships are driven from that hub. And that hub really becomes a bottleneck. Our view is, your innovation fabric of your organization has to be distributed. Different nodes, be it your center in, in US, your, be it your center in Morocco, should be able to talk to startups or universities anywhere in the world. And you, you create a mechanism where different parts of the organization is able to seamlessly work with your engineering partners, your universities, startups, or even your own competition to drive transformation. And finally, organizations are reimagining their processes. The big challenge, you, you look at how products are being built. Companies are used to launching products once, once in uh, five years, once in three years maybe. Any guess on how often Amazon deploys the software and production? Any guesses? 11.6 seconds. Every 11.6 seconds, they're pushing software to production. So if your software content is increasing in every product, you're going to have a scenario where you need to drive the such, um, such change. You've got to get your product out in the market much, much faster. For that, you need digital tr uh, um, processes, agile transformation, DevOps, a lot of these newer areas for you to drive this 
process change rapidly. So these are some of the key, um, key aspects, what we saw companies driving to drive digital transformation. This is not the dinner menu. Charles, I'll just spend a, um, a few minutes talk about wh uh, why we believe France can take a leadership going forward. The key things you need, you need a vibrant ecosystem of startups. You need access to high quality talent. You need to have a right set of engineering partners and you need to have a market access to to, to, for, for markets to consume the digital products you build. And we believe France has all four of these, and we'll talk about that. Here's an interesting quote, right? Technology alone is not enough. It's technology married with liberal arts, married with humanities that yields us the results that make our heart sing. That's Steve Jobs. France creates 52,000 technologies, 20,000 fine arts, 40,000 humanities. If you can harness this together, you have a talent ecosystem which can rival any talent ecosystem in the world. France is the second largest startup ecosystem in Europe, has a high potential to be a clear uh, leader um, in driving, uh, start and driving the growth of startups. So large companies can meaningfully work with startups in terms of creating accelerators and, and driving partnership with these startups uh, to bring that DNA within your organization. And the third part is the service providers. France has some of the mature engineering and R&D service providers in the world with presence across, across the world, right? So if you're, you're able to work with your service provider partners here, they can open up access to global talent, be it in China and in India and in Morocco and other countries. So working with the right partners for the right skills uh, and, and then using that to get into global, it's again very, very critical. And fourth, we just looked at the top 10 French companies, and most of the companies are already global. They get just only 20% of revenue from France. The fact that they are already global, how do you use the global access you have, not just for the markets, but use it for accessing talent in that locations? and using that and create centers of ex excellence across the globe and drive your digital transformation. My final slide. France has a history of creating leaders in times of change. In the last two years, I've read quite a bit about Napoleon, Charles de Gaulle. I've visited Monet's garden in Giverny seen Cezanne's paintings in Provence. We strongly believe it's the time for France to create the next generation of digital leaders who will drive change within large companies as well as create the next set of large digital native companies. Thank you. <laughs>